Thanks. So my name is Will Quig Eastland, and I'm a lawyer. I was a 1998 graduate of the UK College of Law. And I'm going to start by saying thanks to everybody else in the week and for having us here today, as well as Warren Nash, wherever he went to, for showing us the way. Right. So, so thank you. Um, so we've identified a problem for frequently practicing tennis players. And with that problem, we've come up with a robotic solution. And we're going to, I'm going to discuss with you the market and what the customers look like. So I'm going to start with whose favorite movies any all, I'm sure, every, just me. Okay. Uh, so we're going to start the same way with uh, Peru. So there was a player at the U.S. Open this past fall, and she wanted to, didn't know if she do get it. And so she decided she wanted to see the sights, go see a show, and um, was on her way to the show, was in a hurry, got lost, and so saw a police officer and said, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little turned around. How do I get to Carnegie Hall? And the officer thought for a second, and she said, practice, young lady. Lots and lots of practice, right? And so it's the same thing with tennis players. There's three main ways you can practice tennis. One is hitting a ball against the wall. Another is hitting balls that are being shot at you from a ball machine. Remember, this we'll come back to in a second. And another is sitting with a hopper like I have next to me, tossing the ball up, practicing your surf, right? So when you're done, this is what confronts you, right? So on TV, there's ball kids. We, we can't afford them, right? So this, at, it, at the end of any practice session, we're confronted with a whole court full of balls, and we have to then pick them up. And that gives everybody a sad face. <laughs> so most people pick it up with a hopper. And as you can see, it's kind of a tedious process to pick up balls by uh, using the hopper. Um, and so I had the idea, right, as I went ahead, what if you uh, came up with a machine using robotics that took the human out of the process? Um, so let's take a look. Here's our invention. The freeze ray, sorry, wrong, wrong presentation. Hold on. Uh, this is our, our robot. It's called the rover. We're at the product stage. Um, this is a shot from our uh, provisional patent application that we filed in February. Um, is there a business around this? We think so, right? So the ball machine market in the US is about $20, $25 million to the top four companies. And they start about, you know, the, the entry level is 230. We're hoping that a commercially viable rover can come in at 500 to something. Um, who are these people that would buy them? Well, uh, Tennis Industry Association says that there's five and a half million frequent tennis players. Our theory is frequent players practice frequently. Uh, they can afford convenience. Um, so a healthy, robust percentage of those folks are gonna buy this, again, is our business hypothesis. Um, secondary market, we're kind of guesstimating that 25% would be the facilities that rent ball machines to people. Uh, tennis pros, teaching tennis pros, that actually currently force their students to go pick up the balls for them while they're on the clock, right? So this would be an improvement. Uh, athletic programs, etc. So where are we? So we came up with the idea in 2012. Um, we kicked it around, we decided to file the provisional patent application, and we recruited a financial director and an engineer recently and became a client of uh, Warren's. And so in the near future, we're hoping to use the money we get today to help develop a prototype, to put something in front of a customer. As they say, no product survives customer interaction unscathed, right? So we want to do that with the least amount of money possible. Um, so I'll take a moment to introduce you to my team. Again, I'm Will. My wife, Janine, a lawyer formerly with the Cabinet for Economic Development. Alex, where is Alex? Alex is a mechanical engineer. Go Yellow Jackets, is he? Um, and Pat Kelly, over here, uh, is a Baghdad School graduate with a dual degree in finance and management. And Catherine couldn't make it tonight. She was also formerly with the Cabinet for Economic Development. So uh, I introduce you to a problem for practicing tennis players and our idea of how we can fix it, and we introduced you to the market and the customers, and we think that there's a, a reasonable chance you can build a three to seven million dollar revenue high-tech company making these products here in the bluegrass. And we're kind of aspiring to follow in the footsteps of big ass fans, they're not big ass solutions, right? So um, if we earn your support today, I can guarantee you that we'll all have happy face. Thank you.